my dear students hello welcome on this session on this session we are going to discuss the imidazoles if you remember the whole frame of chemotherapy and chemotherapeutic agents we had penicillins cephalosporins beta lactam antibiotics so we started with the discussion of mainly affecting gram positive organisms then we went to the right side of the spectrum i am calling right side because it's gram negative so gram negative aerobic organisms we discussed aminoglycosides for gram negative aerobic organisms then we came in the middle and we discussed broad spectrum antibiotics that tetracyclines chloramphenicol we also discussed the extended spectrum antimicrobial agents including the macrolides including sulfur drugs cotrimoxazole and quinolones and what we are left with is on the right side we said aminoglycosides for gram negative aerobic infections we are left with the gram negative anaerobic organisms and this is why this module of imidazoles imidazoles not only inhibit the gram negative anaerobic infections but they are also useful against number of other organisms number of other parasites so these drugs have become very important especially in the setup of the post operative and hospital infections when you face gram negative anaerobic organisms so i have a look at the slide now imidazoles i am saying in the title they are sidle agents they can kill the microorganisms that's great and they are mainly useful against gram negative anaerobes and protozoa so gram negative anaerobes and protozoa is imidazoles on the same slide you have a look at the names metronidazole tinidazole and the newer ones secnidazole and ornidazole and many more are coming going to the next slide what's the mechanism of action that's a very typical mechanism of action the drug is taken up by the microorganism and the drug gets reduced and it gets converted into its next form its form it forms a nitro radical because the drug is getting reduced it's called reductive metabolism so look at that this drug is very wise is going inside the microorganisms is using the enzyme of the microorganism to get reduced into a nitro radical and when this nitro radical is formed it starts accepting the electrons and then is able to inhibit pyruvate ferrodoxin oxidoreductase pyruvate ferrodoxin oxidoreductase pfor and after inhibiting this there's cutting down of the energy metabolism of the organism leading to cytotoxic effect or leading to the dna damage so i said in the beginning the drug is very wise it goes inside the microorganism inside the organism uses its enzymes to get broken down to get converted into nitro radical we call it reductive metabolism and then this form of the drug which is an active form is able to inhibit pfor pyruvate ferrodoxin oxidoreductase and this proves to be the cytotoxic effect it goes on inhibiting the nucleic acid synthesis there is dna damage and this is why we said imidazoles are bactericidal agents they are active against anaerobic bacteria they are active against the sensitive protozoa what's the spectrum of activity among the anaerobic protozoa it affects the entamoeba histolytica that's your amoeba so whenever someone speaks of metronidazole you always say amoebiasis yes that's a very important use it is able to inhibit or able to be useful in intestinal amoebiasis and whenever we are saying intestinal amoebiasis is extra luminal please remember i am not saying about the amoeba present in the lumen of the intestine the amoeba are present in the intestine but they are present in the intestinal wall so that's intestinal amoebiasis the amoeba present in the lumen are usually the cyst and metronidazole is not going to inhibit the cyst it is going to inhibit the organisms which are present in the intestinal wall so i am saying not in the lumen extra luminal secondly it's also able to inhibit 
the extra intestinal organisms which are not present in the intestine which are present in the other tissues for example liver that's hepatic amoebiasis so intestinal amoebiasis as well as extra intestinal amoebiasis second important protozoa is giardia lamblia producing giardiasis and the third one important is trichomonas vaginalis so in the anaerobic protozoa we have three amoeba giardia and trichomonas the spectrum next slide includes non sporing anaerobic gram negative bacilli and this includes bacteroids to give an example of bacteroids fragilis and gardnerella vaginalis next important organism which is inhibited is h pylori and campylobacter let me remind you of peptic ulcer since the advent of the concept that peptic ulcer is produced by h pylori organism the drug of choice or the management of choice for peptic ulcer has become a triple regimen in peptic ulcer two antimicrobial agents that's two anti h pylori agents plus one proton pump inhibitor so out of these two anti h pylori antimicrobial agents one important could be metronidazole so helicobacter pylori or campylobacter pylori next is able to inhibit spirochetes that's treponema vincenti next one is able to inhibit anaerobic coccus like streptococcus then one worm infestation that's guinea worm infestation is called dracunculus medinensis or dracunculosis is susceptible to metronidazole and very important is able to inhibit the anaerobic gram positive organisms also including clostridium difficile that pseudomembranous enterocolitis fusobacterium and the organisms producing brain abscess the last one on this slide is a very different indication and that's leishmaniasis so if you look at metronidazole it's really got a very extended spectrum is useful against the protozoa which includes amoeba giardia and trichomonas is useful against anaerobic gram negative organisms useful against anaerobic gram positive organisms useful against spirochetes guinea worm leishmania etc we go to the next slide to make the uses of metronidazole out of this spectrum number 1 intestinal that's extra luminal amoebiasis kills the forms in the intestinal wall plus extra intestinal amoebiasis that's hepatic amoebiasis the next indication for metronidazole is giardiasis that's backpackers diarrhea look at this the dose for giardiasis is less it's 400 mg three times a day for one week i take you back to the last item that's intestinal and extra intestinal amoebiasis is 800 mg three times a day for 5 to 10 days if required you can give it by intravenous infusion 1 g intravenous infusion is required in the beginning and then 500 mg every 8 hours and please remember not useful against the asymptomatic cyst passers we move on to the next indication that's cutaneous leishmaniasis we need to remember this next guinea worm infestation already said trichomonas next one is trichomonas vaginalis that was from the protozoa and here you give it as 400 mg three times a day for 5 to 10 days along with you can give additional local treatment 500 mg two times a day or you can use 2 g of single dose the next indication includes all mixed anaerobic gram negative infections have a look at your slide there's a wide variety of infections post operative infections gynecological obstetric abdominal and pelvic infections deeper tissue infections bacterial vaginosis hospital acquired infections not only this severe gram negative septicemia brain abscess 
and endocarditis. It can be used by intravenous infusion in all these situations as we just mentioned. So if you look at these infections, I hope you understand what's the importance of metronidazole or imidazole. It could be really useful in critical situations, in life-threatening situations. The next important indication is acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis, that's ANUG. Next, you could use it for Vincent angina or stomatitis or after stomatitis. Let me make a mention of the organisms. Fusobacterium nucleatum or Treponema vincenti. This can be used with other drugs that's amoxicillin, tetracyclines, gentamicin or cephalosporins. Metronidazole uses don't get over, they are still continued. So next use is peptic ulcer which we mentioned in the spectrum and it's a part of triple drug regimen with amoxicillin or clarithromycin along with one proton pump inhibitor and the, the treatment will last just for one to two weeks. The use number 10, if you wish, put it as use number 1 in your notes. That's very important. And I'm speaking about pseudomembranous enterocolitis. That's the antibiotic associated enterocolitis, especially clindamycin induced. That's very severe. And it could be induced by cephalosporins, it could be induced by penicillin, tetracyclines, various other broad spectrum or broader spectrum antimicrobial agents could induce the pseudomembranous enterocolitis by inhibiting the large variety of microorganisms in the intestines. So it's produced by Clostridium difficile and metronidazole is extremely, extremely effective. That's the drug of first choice to treat this super infection. 800 milligrams three times a day for 10 days will be used. Just a reminder for you, for Clostridium difficile infection, metronidazole is the drug of first choice. And if you remember your previous modules, the second choice is vancomycin. Because vancomycin is toxic, metronidazole is comparatively safer, metronidazole becomes the first choice. The next indication is oral cavity and dental infections. The next indication is hepatic encephalopathy to reduce the microbial flora in the intestine to reduce the ammonia production. I want you to wait and have a look at this particular therapeutic use or indication for some time and think for a moment, do you remember anything else? Hepatic encephalopathy to reduce the microbial flora and to reduce the ammonia production. Do you remember any other drug which could also act locally on the intestinal microorganisms and produce the same effect as metronidazole? Are you getting it? It was neomycin. It was an aminoglycoside which will not be systemically absorbed. You give it by oral route and will produce local effect. So you have two choices in hepatic encephalopathy to reduce the intestinal microflora. One is neomycin and second one is this. That's metronidazole. So these were the uses or indications of metronidazole. We go on to see what are the adverse effects what are the toxic effects of metronidazole? Have you ever consumed metronidazole tablet or tinidazole tablet? If you already consumed for a period of 3 days or 4 days or 5 days, I don't need to tell you. As soon as you start this drug, as soon as you take one or two doses, you start getting that feeling. And that's, that feeling is a very typical metallic taste sensation in your mouth. That's anorexia, nausea vomiting sometimes, sometimes diarrhea, dry mouth, abdominal cramps, skin rash, dark urine, all this may happen but most important one is the metallic test sensation. That's very typical of metronidazole, the nausea and the metallic test sensation. Second important thing, when you are on metronidazole, you should avoid alcohol because it can produce disulfiram like reaction. Next it produces hemolysis in G6PD deficient patients. And lastly, in larger doses, it can start affecting the central nervous system and can lead to headache, dizziness and can lead to various manifestations like vertigo, ataxia, seizures, peripheral neuropathy, dysuria and parasthesia. Next, it can lead to neutropenia and can lead to oral candida infection 
and can lead to cystitis. So on this slide, disulfiram like reaction, patients should not consume alcohol while being on metronidazole and second, the metallic taste sensation, two very important things for metronidazole. Now we discuss the adverse effect further, the rare one is pancreatitis, it's got mutagenic and teratogenic potential and the safety in the pregnancy is not proved. So don't use it in pregnant women and it's contraindicated if you're consuming alcohol. If you have a CNS disorder, major CNS disorder, then pregnancy and patients having blood dyscrasias. Please remember it can inhibit warfarin metabolisms. This is one important drug interaction just like alcohol.